comment on the our U- latest YouTube video, the Arsenal yep. Newcastle pre match, um, and ask for any topics or questions you want covered uh, for the game or, or for this podcast. Um, we've got two comments from Khalil and A4. So I appreciate them comments. Yeah, thank and they're you very both much. quite similar comments. So I'm thinking we can just answer these kind of all together. Okay. Um, I'll read out the, the comment from Khalil and then A4 and then we'll, we'll get to it. So Khalil said, talk about how Arsenal can improve for next season slash new management, ownership, players, etc. A4 has put, talk about what Arteta needs to achieve to stay at the club and if you're in and out and why. So what do you want to start with, man? <laughs> Pass the buck to you. So, so w- would you change? Like, can we just start from scratch? Like, same stadium, just no one. Like, or like, like the whole everything needs replacing. The ownership needs replacing. Yeah. The other management needs replacing. The, the a, a lot of the team needs replacing. So, uh, I I think if we because of the ownership, I think everyone knows how we feel. The ownership, we're hoping Cronkay's out, and we're hoping that we get an. We get an owner that wants to invest in the team, wants the best for Arsenal, and wants us to compete. Whether that's Daniel Ek from Spotify, regardless, you know, there's not really too much you can say on the ownership. Like everyone doesn't want Cronkay running the club, or Josh Cronkay running the club, you know. So, I the ownership side of it is is done for me. I, you, everyone knows how we feel about that situation. Management, I'm 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 thinking our tech needs to go, and this incorporates with our A Force question as well. So. I'm pretty much Arteta out at this point. I think we've had a dreadful season in the league. I think, you know, the only saving grace is if we're in Europa. But even then, I'm actually not convinced that we should go forward of Arteta at this point, even if we do win the Europa League. I think I've, I'm starting to change my mind on that. I think he's a rookie. Um, he hasn't learned. I don't think he's good enough at this point. Um, it's sad to say because I support Arsenal with all my heart and I love Arsenal with all my heart and I always want the best for Arsenal. But I don't think that Arteta is the best for Arsenal. I was, I think I was speaking to you last night, and I was saying how well that Conte is doing with uh, Inter Milan in mm-hmm. Serie A, and I'm thinking. I told you he never need to come to Arsenal. <laughs> if, if, either Rogers or Conte, if we can get them, then there's they, no they way would be Conte the two leaves for me. to come to but Arsenal. I'm just, I'm just saying, like you never know. He's got a vendetta against Chelsea. They sacked him. He's pissed off with Chelsea. You never know. He could go to Chelsea's rivals Arsenal and do a job. And I think he'd make us competitive again. I'm not saying we'd win the league within a year or two, but I think he'd get us back into the Champions League. And I think that's what we need. I think we should go all out for Conte or Brendan Rodgers. Oh, I really do. I think that'd be a really, really good place to start. And as far as he's put about. Uh, players as well what should we do with the players I think we've got good enough players to compete for top four I really do yeah. I think that well at least like be around know, there like fourth fifth not yeah. tenth I think if you look at what Brendan Rodgers has done with Leicester how far they are into you know the Champions League spot they're pretty much guaranteed at this point and if you look at their team I wouldn't say it's too dissimilar to, to Arsenal I really wouldn't mm-hmm. I think position for position pound for pound we are Quite similar pound for to pound, I love that. The boxing I, I think analogy. so, though. Do you know what I mean? I, I really do. I, I, I genuinely do think that we've got quite equal teams. I think Leicester have got better in positions. I think we've got better in positions. I really do think that we've massively underachieved. I don't know whose better. team's better. I know that they play like they're better than us right now. Yeah, but that they and that what's the denominating factor? It's the coach. I mean, that's why I'm saying I don't think that they. I'm not going to say yeah. that they've got a better squad. I'm saying they're playing much better. The players yeah. are playing better football and they're technically better than us right now they know their job unless the players know their job but some of that is due to tactics and coaching and getting the best out of mentality and, and stuff the, the main the main difference between them it really is is, is consistency and that Arteta doesn't bring consistency I mean it's going to sound really trippy but he consistently does not bring consistency he really doesn't you are very up and down this is why I'm hesitant yeah. to go like oh this is a really good game because like it, uh, it I mean. doesn't mean anything in the long run it doesn't and mean think- progress the thing that people need to realise as well is like, if we didn't win against Newcastle today after that pathetic Villarreal performance where we're lucky to still be in the tie, then I think it, honestly, if we lost today against Newcastle, I think Arteta should have gone. I still think he should go. Firing like, before the semi-final. I, I mean, if he didn't get a reaction from the t- this team against relegation candidates, well, not no, anymore, but like relegation level team in in Newcastle after that Villarreal performance and it shows he hasn't got the players it shows he's not a good coach so you know it was that but do you want to touch on this man because I'm talking way too much um, if we're talking about strictly player recruitment um, yeah. Bellerin had a good game 
But there's speculation about him in the future and what's going to happen with the right back slot. Allegedly, we're looking at Hakimi. Allegedly, we're also looking at Max Ahrens. Lots of stuff has been floated around. If we do get rid of Bellerin, I think we'll get enough money from him to PSG or whoever uh, that will actually it'll be a pretty even net spend on who we replace him with. So it's not like we're spending a bunch of our transfer budget replacing him because um, he actually does have market value. And I think there are some clubs out there that believe that they can get 2016 Bellerin out of 2021 Bellerin. So I don't worry about that one too much. If we don't sign Odegaard, and we'll get to this, Kieran, um, yeah. then we do. I, I think we need another ten because Smithrow is injury prone, and yeah. um, we before we had Smithrow and we had no ten, it was awful creatively. I think we're stacked for wingers right now. I don't know what happened to Nelson, but we are in the position where I think we'll get between sixty and eighty million for all of our fringe players if we do decide to sell. I reckon we can get twenty for Nelson. I reckon we can get twenty for Willock. I reckon we can get fifteen for Enkesi, which is already fifty five. I reckon there's also value in uh lack if we sell him. I'll get to the striker point after. We yeah. we've also got two assets that we don't currently play with us right now, which is Gwendouzi and Torreira. Gwendouzi might come back, Torreira won't. Torreira, let's just say ten, even though it could be more, um, yeah. because he's fucked himself and us in the process by yeah. um ruining our bargaining position. I understand yeah, I, I I understand his his personal situation. But if we're talking business, he's, you know, yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah. So there's probably eighty million in fringe players right now. Um so we've got money to spend. I, if Laka goes and we replace him, I would say we don't risk Martinelli on his own there. So I would get a new striker, someone like Eduard. There's still be a player, the French striker, but he's already 28 and I don't want to replace a 30-year-old Frenchman with a 28-year-old Frenchman that's unproven when the 30-year-old has already scored 15, 16 goals yeah. in the Premier League, which would be the dumbest thing ever. We need a young 23, 24-year-old. Maybe someone like Morelos at Rangers if he can stop being an idiot. Um, <laughs> I like that. He's just a walking red card, but he's not even that good. He's not that good to justify. He could probably play well for like a, a Southampton. Yeah. Um, if not, uh, let me think of strikers. Who do you think is striker wise? Because um, Danny Ings wants to leave. I think he's on a free at the end of the season, isn't he? I'm pretty sure. Ings, he's not on a free. Has he not? No. Has he got one more year afterwards? I didn't even know he had one more year. Well, he's definitely he not on a free. I thought he was on a free. I'm sure he's on a free. I'm, I'm sure he We is. could get a Guerrero, but yeah, it's, again, I'd... it's a risky one with the injuries. Yeah. I I think that you know we've got Martinelli, we've another one got actually Balogun just to say. Contract. Yeah, go on. Um, there's rumours to David the Jonathan David. You remember? Uh, I think he's playing in Lille. Um, there've been rumours as well. Well, I mean, in the striker situation, I think that if we're not going to go out and buy, like, we're not, like realistically, we're not going to go out and buy a world class striker this this window. I, I'm honestly still quite relatively happy promoting Balogun, having Martinelli, having Lacquer well, after definitely a not, season. Yeah, but we're not going to have Lacquer. We're definitely not getting top four if we don't replace Lacquer. Yeah, but Remember, I we're 10th mean, now and you need to replace 15 goals from Lacquer yeah. just to get back to 10th. Yeah, I, 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 honestly, I'm not sure in a striking position because it, it honestly, it's depending on what budget we've got. Like, I don't well, okay, no, but be... hypothetically, let's say we get the 60 million when I think we can get more for the, for those fringe players, plus what do we average spend on transfers in the summer? Seventy. So actually, if you sell all those players, you've got like a hundred and thirty. I'd rather, I'd honestly rather play Balogun and Martinelli more. I really would. But then you can't say I want to get top four because there's no chance. The, there's, but we've we've still got experience in Abamyang and Lacazette. I still think we just need to give Balogun and Martinelli more game time because we're not going to go out there and buy a forty million, fifty million pound striker anymore. I just but think we, we need to actually we, could. we've seen it but we've seen it but we, they won't though that's the thing we've I want to be realistic and we've seen it with Smith Rowe we've seen it with Saka give our young players the chance and they might Balogun if if Balogun starts 25 games next season or, or has 50 do you know what I mean who's to say he can't score 20 that is 100% games? the wrong play but what, I mean that's your that's your opinion you're putting a whole season on someone who's never really played in the first but I'm not before. saying Balogun, I'm saying Balogun, Martinelli. Like, I'm saying that we need to give them more game time, more opportunities. And they can the come off positions. the bench, they can play the Europa if we get into it, they can play the but League what, Cup. How are they, how are they going to develop into top striker? Because you saw it with Harry Kane, he went on loan, he had a good season. He then he can go on loan. He played him. Man, we, we need to play Martinelli and Balogun more. And we might we might unearth a great young striker for the next 10 years. We need to play them more, give them opportunities, play them in their best positions. Fine, but then say we're going to finish 13th this year and it's fine. But if we won't finish 13th... 
We're finishing 10th oh, now with Lacquer. We just need a good coach. But it's more Tet is the reason why we're 10th. It's nothing... It's not a lot to do with... Like, the players haven't been good enough. But you've got to look at the manager who's, who's fucking in charge of them. He's been trash. He has. I'm sorry, but he has. Arteta is the main reason why we're 10th. Well, I think we're, we've gone up to 9th now. But just with a game in hand over Aston Villa. But, like, the only reason we're 9th is because of players like Emil smith Rowe and Saka producing the form. If they, if Emil smith Rowe and Saka didn't come into the team, we'd be, like, 13th or 14th. I'm genuine. Right. Maybe even lower. Back to the question. What I would do if they're talking about recruitment wise is if it sounds like we've we're gonna we need to replace the right back, um, ten and striker, the right back should be a net neutral payment because Bellerin has value. If we do get Odegaard, that's a big chunk out, he'll probably be fifty million. Um and then let's say we've got fifty more million after that and we do buy a striker like Edward for twenty, we've got thirty in the middle. Uh, apparently we're interested in Eve Pasuma from Brighton to fortify the midfield. I'd actually be really happy with that and that's basically yeah. transfer business done. And we also need to buy a backup left back big time. Yep. Yeah. We really do actually. Because like, when Tierney doesn't play, there's a big problem in left back. I forgot about that, actually. They're talking about Joel Lopez in the in the youth squad, but he um, hasn't even made the bench or anything got, like that. So you know, it's, it's got to be someone that's a level below Tierney. You know, well, I don't yeah. want us to spend 25, 30 million on a left back. But I'm thinking if we can get a, quite a decent, solid left back to play 10, 10 starts a season, 10 to 15 starts, while Tierney's probably... You know, he's he's not a proper injury-prone player, but he, he's going to be injured next season at some point. And we need someone to be like, instead of trying to accommodate Xhaka there or play Cedric out of position, let's get a genuine left-back who's happy, you know, because we had, like, Kolasinac. I mean, we don't want to be playing like players like Kolasinac. Yeah, let's get a genuinely solid left-back, and then I think we're good to go, considering, obviously, the positions. We'll disagree about the striker position because I don't think that that's our main priority right now. I think we need to invest more in the team elsewhere. Um, but yeah, like, how, where are you at the moment on Arteta as well? And then we'll move. If he on wins the Europa questions. League and he gets in the Champions League, then he gets some some more time to do what he needs to do. I don't think that it will create much, but you can't yeah. um, you can't fire someone for getting you back in the Champions League when that's what we've been yeah. desperate for for the last three or four years. True, true, true. But okay, if he doesn't, yeah. then it's gone because tenth, eleventh in the league is absolutely so, terrible. So- Let's put it this way then. So let's say hypothetically, we somehow, you know, beat Villarreal in the semi-final, and we some even further somehow beat Manchester United in the final of the Europa League. Mm-hmm. And Arteta has a poor start in the league next season. Should he go then? Um, say say we you know we're in eighth or ninth, ten games. Yeah, if the it's season. if it's looking like he can't turn it around, then in the same way that Emery was eighth or ninth when he got fired in yeah. November, it should be one of those ones. If he loses the dressing room, it's over. Yeah, All right, okay. But it's on him. If he does get into the Champions League by winning the Europa League and he has another summer to like get rid of all of the deadwood that are holding the, cu- like the club back culturally and everything else and he and it makes it his squad, then he's got no excuses and then he's just got to keep doing it in Champions League or, no- or nothing. Yeah, I just want to say like I do... It's, I'm conflicted because if he gets us back into the Champions League by winning the Europa League, like I do what I do think in my in my heart of heart. I'm thinking, yeah, does he deserve more time because he's done that and he's got us in the Champions League? But because how poor we've been this season in the league, I'm thinking like, I'm 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 just not sure that. Yeah, I'm so I'm so like conflicted. Good luck getting say. another manager to come to the club when you fired one for getting you in the Champions League. They'll see that yeah, and go, nope. But you'll see how trash he's been in the league, and it's justifiable. I'm I think saying, you'll I'm, put I'm a lot of people both. off the job. You'll make it look like a toxic Chelsea-like job. It's not, though, because Chelsea, you know, Chelsea shouldn't be anywhere near 8th or ninth in the league, and they would sack anyone, regardless of winning the Europa League, if they were ninth in the league. They would. So I, I just think, like, I'm conflicted. I, I can't give a right or wrong answer, because I, I don't know. But I, I feel like there's got there's got to be consequences from how fucking trashed Arteta has been this season. Yeah, he's gone if he doesn't win the Europa League. But yeah, we'll we'll move on from from these comments because you know we've had a good old debate on these. Um, 